1980's Friday the 13th is about an insane woman named Pamela Voorhees, who goes on a murderous rampage at Camp Crystal Lake. Fingers crossed Paramount doesn't false claim this one, because I plan on doing the whole series. Now polish your machete and throw on a grandma sweater, it's time to watch people die. In the first ever kill of the Friday the 13th franchise, Pamela, furious that the counselors are making love, makes her way into the barn and bumps off the teens before they can bump uglies. We weren't doing anything, we were just messing up. <laughs> you could have thrown buckets at her, you could have thrown a door at her, you could have thrown a tire at her, and yet you go for a cardboard box and wonder why it's not working. After a horrible attempt at running away, this lady rightfully so gets added to the legend of Camp Blood. <laughs> After hitching a ride with Mrs. Voorhees, Annie soon realizes she is not okay. She throws herself from the speeding jeep, somehow managed to mess up her leg, and after a horrible attempt at running away, and not even trying to defend herself, we get, in my opinion, the most breathtaking kill of the whole movie. <laughs> The first animal of the Friday the 13th franchise, and the first snake of the kill count, this unlucky reptile made its way into a seriously ungroovy cabin. And I suppose I should say this for all you sick fucks who like watching people die, a real animal really dies. Alright, now let's watch this shit. After seeing someone head into a cabin, Ned decides he just has to check it out, because why not? And considering he couldn't fend off a middle-aged woman, or at least run away, did he really deserve to live? Kevin Bacon just wanted to relax after making sexin', but when Simon Ned's blood hits him in the face, an arrow hits him in the back of the neck, and bursts out his throat. And to think, this whole time I thought the first guy we see with wood in his throat would be Steve Christie. <laughs> My second favorite kill of the movie. After heading to clean up, Pamela stops by to deliver Marcy an axe to the face. And just to make you laugh a little, allow me to point out that while she's dead, you can see her blink. While getting ready for bed, Brenda hears someone calling up for help, and feels the need to investigate, because everyone knows how dangerous this simple little campground is. After running to the archery range, she gets filled with arrows off screen. You could have had a night on the town, but instead is gonna have a life in the ground. After walking back to Camp Crystal Lake, Steve runs into Mrs. Voorhees, who ends his whole career. Oh, hi. What are you doing on this mess? There's no denying Pamela is a lot stronger than she looks. After going off on his own, like all smart people in horror movies, Bill gets axed off screen. With a slash to the throat and arrows pinning him to a door. After Mrs. Voorhees arrives, Alice soon realizes she may not be as safe as she thinks. And while Pamela's talking about Jason, we see flashbacks of the day he drowned. From water in the brain to water in the lungs. After all the horrible attempts at killing Alice, it kinda makes it hard to believe Pamela was the killer all along. During a fight that felt just a little bit too long, and kind of sad, Alice managed to get a hold of Pamela's machete, and see how long a human can go on living without their head. In the end, 1980's Friday the 13th has a total of 12 kills, just one away from that unlucky number. My favorite was easily Andy's throat slit, with Marcy's death being a close second. Which one is yours? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, I'll catch you back here again, 